Hello everyone and welcome back to the Nerd Cave. In this tutorial today, I'm going to show you how to connect a 7 segment display to the Raspberry Pi Pico. Not stopping there, we're also going to uncover the magic of multiplexing that allows us to add more segments and only needing one additional pin on a Raspberry Pi Pico. So let's get started. To follow along with this tutorial, you will need the following. Two 7 segment displays, the Raspberry Pi Pico, wires, a breadboard and two resistors with the value between 300 to 1 kilo ohm. You can use the following diagram to build your circuit. After building your circuit, you should have something that looks like this. Let's have a look at a 7 segment display. It is an electronic device for displaying decimal numerals. Its name comes from the fact that it is made of 7 different illuminating segments. Each of these segments is a small light, typically an LED, and they are lit in different combinations to represent the numbers 0 to 9. The segments are organized as follows. So if we want to display 1, we need to light up segment B and C, which we will have a look at now. Plug in the Raspberry Pi Pico and open Fonny. Remember you can find all the code on my website, link in the description. So let's look at the code together. In this block of code, we import all the necessary modules, which is the machine and view time, and then we define the GPIO pins for each segment of the 7 segment display. We define the segments as tuples and it contains the pin numbers. We also define patterns, which is a list of tuples that we can represent the digits from 0 to 9. A 0 will indicate a digit that is on and a 1 will indicate an off digit. We then initialize our GPIO pins with the pin class and then a common cathode pin for the display. We then create the function display digit, which takes a digit as a parameter. The function retrieves the corresponding digit pattern from patterns based on a given digit. It then iterates over the 8 segments and then set the respective GPIO pins according to the digit pattern. The common cathode pin is set to low to turn on the display and then set back to 1 to turn off the display. Then to test the display we create a while through loop, which will continuously loop and display the numbers 0 to 9 for each digit. The inner loop continues for 1 second or 1000 milliseconds before moving on to the next digit. This will then create a delay of 1 second between displaying each digit. Running the code we get the following results where we can see we have the digit from 0 to 9 being displayed on a 7 segment display. Here is a diagram for example 2. You see we use the same number of pins but here we multiplex them. So meaning the input for the first one was also the input to the second one. The only difference is then GP17 is the other common cathode pin that we need to add to this. So follow this diagram and then you should have something that looks like this. Copy all the code from my website and then let's have a quick look at the code together. For the first section nothing changed from the first example. We have all the segments and then our patterns. Here for displays we have now the extra GP pin which is pin 17 and that is the 7 segment that is being multiplexed. Here we define a function display digit that takes a display and digit as argument. This function displays a specific digit on a specific display. It turns off both displays, sets the segment pins based on the digits pattern and then turns on the appropriate display, waits for a short time and then turns off the display. In the while through loop, we repeatedly displace the two digits on a 7 segment display with multiplexing through GPIO pins 15 which is display 0 and GP17 which is display 1. Running the code, we get the following results. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If there's any other sensor or module you want me to cover in the next video, please let me know in the comment section. I will see you in the next video.